Far Cry 6 was released recently to both excitement and sheer boredom, depending upon who you spoke to. And I've never been a huge fan of the series, as it has always epitomized some of the more annoying aspects of open world style gameplay. So for our critical thought today, I want to talk a little bit more about how the open world design or open world gameplay has come and gone, and what it means to design a game around micro and macro game systems. When it comes to the game industry, Probably one of the closest aspects or closest comparisons that it has to the idea of prestige TV what is this idea of the open world genre. This concept that you're building a game not only with the size of a city, but sometimes the size of a tri-state area, a world, a galaxy, a universe, multiple universes. It has been one of the more touted genres since the explosion of Grand Theft Auto 3, to that period where just about everyone was making an open world game, to of course the rise of Assassin's Creed, and Far Cry, and Skyrim, and so on and so forth. But it is a genre that I feel has become a little bit stale, depending upon which games you play. And it's an issue of how the focus of design is. You see, open world gameplay is not the same as a traditional linear game. It, with a traditional linear game, levels are designed around set beginnings, middles, and ends. Open world design is about creating a vast space, and that space has gotten enormously large over the past five to six years, and then filling it up with things to do, the points of interest that we've talked about many times over here. But the problem with traditional open world design is that it tends to be create or it tends to create this clash between what I've dubbed micro and macro gameplay. Micro gameplay or micro game systems are <coughs> excuse me, the moment to moment gameplay. What are you doing at any given moment when you're playing an open world game? Running, driving, shooting, fighting, jumping, swimming, anything along those lines. Macro represents the major systems and forms of progressions. These are your various side missions, the actual main missions themselves, the things that you are doing in the game that are actually going to move the story and the world forward. I can drive around Grand Theft Auto for hours and hours on end. It's not going to do anything but complete one story mission, complete one side mission. That changes things around. And it creates, again, this clash between these two forms of gameplay. You see, most developers will focus on macro, because macro is far more easier to design in terms of progression. Most missions in an open world game, as we know, are uniformly linear. Go here, do this set of tasks, go back to our base. And it allows you to design them so that you kind of take the open world out of the open world. The other aspect are the numerous side quests. Because I'm sure you've all had to climb a tower or a lighthouse or a beacon at some point in an open world game. The reason why these tasks are built or these tasks are built is that they are designed around very short engagements but they can be repeated and cloned multiple times in the world. In, again, any Assassin's Creed game, you're going to do some kind of tower climb in order to reveal the map. There are base raids, there are little dungeons, and these points of interest are oftentimes very much developer-focused because it allows you to put something in the world that you know exactly how it's going to play out. The problem, though, is that when you only focus on macro-style gameplay, it leaves the moment-to-moment -moment kind of just, you know, in the dust somewhere. And I have played countless open-world games, especially from indie developers, that make the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay just a chore. So, uh, stop me if you've heard of this one before. You have to explore a giant space walking very, very slowly, and you walk 25 minutes in this direction to only realize that you miss a point of interest and event trigger 20 minutes back that way. So you have to walk all the way back there, 
watch a 5 to 10 minute cutscene, to then walk 25 minutes back up to where you were, to then realize that the next point of interest is 45 minutes that way. And I'm sure all of you love to do that in your open and wide style games. And like I said at the start, the allure of open world gameplay has become something for a lot of developers to chase after. And when it works, it creates a very inviting game as we've saw with games like Don't Starve, Subnautica, Valheim as being a very big example. And the problem that a lot of these games have is that they oftentimes focus so much on the macro that they forget that the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay has to work. That it has to be engaging to walk from point A to point B. If it's not, why should the player do it? And of course the answer to that is that they're trying to push the macro-oriented stuff. That they want you to do all those side quests and talk to every single character and find every single feather, pigeon, coin, briefcase. I don't know what they're doing the latest Assassin's Creed games. Like, let me know, what's the uh, latest collectible MacGuffin in those titles? And where open world design tends to mess up is that if all you care about is the macro or the larger grand scheme of things... The player still needs to interact. There still needs to be a point of going around this world. It was one of the reasons where I kind of lost favor or lost interest in the Saints Row franchise. As they developed more and more of the superhero powers and crazy flight and super jumping and so on. Is that when you're super jumping around an entire city, the city itself doesn't really matter anymore. You're not really exploring a city, it's just, you know, if I'm here, I just have to super jump over there. And it's why, for me personally, a lot of my favorite open world style games tend to be micro first. That's more about what you're doing at the given moment, as opposed to completing 27 missions, finding 8 different bases to raid, climbing 6 different towers, and so on. A underrated game, I thought, was the Mad Max game by Avalanche Studios. They are, of course, the creators of Just Cause. Now, Mad Max as a whole wasn't the best open world game, but what it did better than a lot of other titles was it made the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, specifically the driving and the car-based combat, really interesting, and I enjoyed that, and I was hoping for more of that, and less of the kind of Batman Arkham Asylum cloned uh, fisticuffs. So, I want to talk, or we're going to spend the second part of this video looking at one of my favorite examples of a game from last decade, and how it really got micro-oriented gameplay working great, probably being second considered to the amazing crackdown. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. And as always, if you're interested in my thoughts on design, then check out my latest offering of books. For entry-level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres with free-to-play coming in 2022. When I look at the idea of macro and micro design in open-world gameplay, one of my absolute favorite examples of the last decade was Sunset Overdrive by Insomniac Games. And I do think in some way this was kind of like their portfolio pitch to Marvel to get them to work on the Marvel Spider-Man game. And what Sunset Overdrive does so well that other games like Just Cause 2, uh, what was it, um, Hulk Ultimate Destruction, uh, I think it was Infamous, or I'm sorry, not Infamous, the uh, other one that involves you being, um, oh, Prototype, that's the one that I'm thinking of, that those games do really well, is that they focus on the micro gameplay to kind of make that push into macro. And what I mean by that is when you play these games, and even going as far back as Spider-Man 2, that it is such a joy and it is an interesting aspect of moving around. The journey, in many cases in these games, is 
far more enjoyable or equally enjoyable as the destination itself. Whereas in a lot of more macro focus open world games, the micro gameplay is kind of just in service to the macro. Moving around is very basic. There's not really that sense of joy or exploration that goes into these games. And I've said I'm looking, I've always still looking for like a 3D platformer to feel really right in terms of open world exploration. Probably the closest would be something like Super Mario Odyssey. But to bring this back to Sunset Overdrive, what the game does really well is that it gives you that sense of movement and flow to the micro gameplay as you are grinding around, wall jumping, bouncing off of cars, shooting enemies. There's just so much that you're able to do over a few seconds of time. Whereas in other open world style games, everything feels, I guess, for lack of a better term, curated. That I can't do anything other than, you know, color inside the lines. And in this case, color inside the lines means just doing objectives, finding MacGuffins, side quests, and stuff like that. And it always hurts the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay for me. I tried playing Horizon Zero Dawn a few years ago, and I just got really tired of the core gameplay loop. I'm sure the story was enjoyable, I'm sure people loved the aesthetics of the game, but I just did not enjoy actually controlling the main character in it. And if I can't enjoy the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in a title, none of that additional stuff is going to work for me. And again, it's why I treat games like Hulk Ultimate, Hulk Ultimate Destruction, Just Cause, Spider-Man 2 as some of the best examples of open-world gameplay where you can't turn off your brain and just move from point A to point B in those games. There's that sense of rhythm that you have to have with how you move your character around. So here's a great litmus test, I think, for what I'm talking about. For those of you who play through the various Saints Row games, especially going from two to four, what did you think of the introduction of all the crazy powers and abilities? Did it work for you in terms of just being able to super jump around or glide or I think did they introduce flight at one point? I don't remember. Because for me, it felt like it robbed the world of its personality. Whereas with something like Sunset Overdrive, even though you never gain the ability to fly, all the movement tech of the game is so well done that it just makes it far more engaging to move around that space. Whereas in a Grand Theft Auto or in a Saints Row, it's just basically get a helicopter, fly over there, or in Saints Row case, point in the direction of my uh, mission pointer, activate super jump, rinse and repeat. This is why in the first part of this video, I put up the footage of Man Max, that I really did enjoy that car-based combat for the fact that it gave you something more to do than just pointing in a direction and hitting the and going, basically. And it is very hard, I think, to do this right, especially in open world games, because micro-oriented gameplay doesn't really mesh in the same way as the curated experiences and curated uh, objectives that we see that come from points of interest and main and sub-quests in a lot of open world style games. Because if you can give the player all these crazy movement techs and powers, can't they just, you know, supersede any kind of challenge? Like if my goal is, you know, at the top of the tower, what's to stop me from just climbing and double jumping and wall jumping up the side of the tower, as opposed to going inside getting to this crazy set piece amount of shooting and fighting? And I feel like we need to see more open world games in that kind of I don't know if I want to go as far as immersive sim style, but at least giving the player far more utility at the micro layer. This was again why I was just not a fan of the, the later Assassin's Creed games that feel far more RPG progression based rather than just letting the player 
go nuts and figure out the best ways of assassinating their targets. And I suppose with that said, I still owe you guys a, a serious attempt at playing one of the later Hitman games. But to wrap things up, open world gameplay, again, is focused on micro and macro oriented content. The games that solely focus on the macro tend to be very bombastic set piece focused games like the Far Cry titles, but the moment to moment of these games generally are lacking. While the micro side, the main quest, side quest, and points of interest often play second banana or second fiddle to just the general moment to moment side. Another possible example would be something like the Dying Light games, that I really like the parkour of them. But whenever I had to do a mission, the game kind of just lost my interest. So for those of you watching this right now, what do you think of my micro and macro style open world games? Do you have a preference? Can you think of a game that managed to curve the traditional experience? A micro oriented game that did really great set pieces? or a macro focus game that had really great moment to moment gameplay. Let me know in the comments below and as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to join our Discord and Patreon link down below. If you like to suggest topics for future videos, please get in touch. And if you'd like to support the channel and get acknowledgement in my next book, we are running the $15 or more donation for acknowledgement pledge until at least January of 2022. Thanks again for watching and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where he's in the art and science of games. Until next time, take care.